Okay, we've we've already talked about creating a list or, or an array or an iterator and being able to iterate over that with, with a loop. There are some situations that come up where it's actually very useful to be able to iterate through multiple lists of things all at once. And this is where our zip function comes in that's built into, uh, into Python. So zip takes input parameters, uh, each parameter is uh, some it is an iteratable object. Uh, so it could be ex explicitly a list or it could be in an object itself. Uh, and what zip does is it produces a new iterator that then uh, produces tuples that contain one object from each of the original it iterable objects. And then we can turn around then and use the for loop to, to iterate over those tuples. So before we get into the uh, the code, let me do a quick drawing here to illustrate an idea. So imagine that I have a, a list of ints. Let me actually reduce the diameter of this a little bit. So my ints might contain our uh, this set of integers. And I might have some set of strings. Actually, I should say explicitly, this is a list of strings. What if, if I then say zip my ints and my strings. Zip will produce an iterator and the very first thing that gets emitted from this iterator is going to, uh, is going to be composed of the, the two first items from these two lists. So what we end up with is uh, the, the first tuple that's, that's produced will be two and foo. And then the next uh, item that is produced by the iterator will be a tuple that contains the next uh, pair of uh, objects, in this case, seven and bar, and, and on down the line. So then we have 20 in baz, and 15 in foobar. Okay, so, so that's the, the, the idea of what's what's going on, and now let's write a little bit of code around that. Okay, so here is our notebook, and let's go ahead and write that code. So my ints was uh, two, seven, 20, and 15, and my strings is uh, foo, bar, baz, and Bar. And if you need another one, it'll be foo baz. So the, there are two uh, uh, lists. And now let's go ahead and write our for loop here. Um, so I'm going to write it out and then we'll talk about it. So i and s in zip Okay, so so what this zip function is go going to do, it, it produces an iterator and uh, and the iterator will emit one tuple at a time, can, and that tuple will be composed of two uh, objects, one drawn from my ints, one drawn from my strings, and the elements of that tuple will be assigned to these variables here, i and s. And we're, it, Python allows us to, to drop the extra set of parentheses uh, in this assignment operation here. Okay, so now let's do something with that. So we're gonna print, uh, we'll print S and then the integer. And remember, we have to explicitly convert that integer uh, over to a string in order to do a string append here. All right, so let's execute that. 
and there are our uh, pairs. Uh, so foo2, bar7, baz20, and on down the line. So zip itself can can take more than two items. We, we can give it three or four, in which case uh, then the number of variables on the left-hand side has to match the, the number of parameters that zip is given. All right, so let me illustrate one other uh, quick uh, constraint here. So let's change my, my ints to be just a length of two. And so the question is when we go to use this code here, I'm gonna copy it just, just so it's clear here. Um, if, if we go to execute this, this code, what happens is that uh, zip will continue to produce uh, tuples as long as there is an object to be consumed from each of these two lists. So here we expect only the only two tuples to be produced because uh, although my my strings continues to have four strings, my ints only has the two ints. Let's execute that and and there are two tuples. So that's a quick introduction to zip and four.